You are watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know about dental implants. My first guest is board certified periodontist, Dr. Wayne Aldridge. Dr. Aldridge, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Randy. Now, before we get into today's topic, uh, tell me a little bit about your practice. What kind of patients are you seeing there? Uh, we see a multitude of patients. Uh, anybody from a CEO of a company to a housewife uh, and anybody in between. Um, if you have a missing tooth or many missing teeth, we can help you chew and function. So better. that's your emphasis. Have, have dental implants become mainstream I and mean, very popular? Dental implants have changed tremendously in the last 10 or 15 years. I have patients coming in now asking for dental implants because their friend had it, their neighbor had it. It's the standard of care for, for dentistry. Now things have changed. They're not as painful, you say, as they no, used no, to be 20 many, years ago. How could that be? I mean, what's changed? Things have changed tremendously. The design of an implant is different. Implants can be placed guidedly. Guided meaning that we can put a little stent over your gums and place an implant right into your gums without pushing any tissue back. What people need to remember is So because that of what? Imaging? Imaging has changed imaging, so much. Well, it's standard of, well, it's not quite standard of care, but a lot of implant surgeons will use um, a CAT scan, some okay. type of computer guided imagery to help place the dental implant. So whereas 10 or 15 years ago, when we pushed the gums back to get access to the tissue, the hard tissue underneath, we had to kind of guess. We guessed on two-dimensional x-rays. Now we know, when I go in there to do a case, I know the quality of the bone, meaning is it balsa wood or is it oak? And if it's oak or Just from looking at a CT. There's special ways that these scientists have done to put things together to make it simple even for me. Okay. You know, it sounds strange, but you look at these images, it tells you exactly what's going on, and I don't have to guess anymore. I don't like guessing when I'm working with patients. They know exactly what's going on, the size of the implant, I know where the nerve is. Now what people have to understand with a dental implant is that bone has no nerve supply. So when you say painful or things are uncomfortable, we're dealing with healthy tissue. This isn't where somebody's going So the implant doesn't, so there's no feeling in that bone? Correct. Okay. You know, the implant goes in there and we just put two or three little stitches in there like you're sewing at home and the gums close over the top and it's all healthy. Now I'm not saying there's not discomfort afterwards, but I typically just give Motrin. Motrin is ibuprofen. You can buy it over the counter. Okay. Two or three tablets and you do fine. Okay, now this is your focus uh, and your specialty. You're a board certified periodontist. And, and when we were looking for somebody to talk about this topic, we wanted to find a specialist. What is a periodontist, by the way? Well, thank you. A periodontist is somebody who goes back to school for two or three years. When I went back to school, after four years of dental school, uh, it was three years of training. And in those three years, it encompassed everything from periodontal surgery to dental implants. Okay. So this isn't a weekend course where I learned how to place a dental implant. It was three years of structured education to get me to the level to then go out and treat people for the last 10 or 15 years of placing dental implants. Now you were in the Army, you were a captain. Yes, uh, Yeah, I was. And well, at West Point. I was a captain stationed up at West Point. Uh, I've always been sort of a patriotic person. Um, okay. I was in the military for 11 years, um, everywhere from a generator repairman and a combat engineer battalion to the Army Dental Corps up at West Point, New York. Um, I was a general dentist for seven years before I went and became a periodontist. So that gave me a good background in how, even though I placed the roots into the jawbone, which is all an implant is, it's a titanium root that replaces your natural. And you're actually giving them their teeth back. I mean, is that true? Yeah. Is that, I mean, you're getting in a way teeth it is. back, absolutely. Okay. And one of the misconceptions that's out there is that people believe that if they're missing, say they're wearing a denture, and they're missing 12 or 14 teeth in their upper jaw, that they need 12 or 14 implants. That's not right. Things have changed a lot over the last 15 years. It could be as little as two or four implants to give you the quality of life and chewing capacity that you had 10 years ago when you had natural teeth. You say there's a lot of people missing, I mean like 20 plus million people wearing dentures. Yeah, no, there's, a, tre right? there's a tremendous amount of people, in the, and this is just based on the United States. But if there's 20 million people missing uh, all of their teeth, maybe two or three percent have had dental implants. Okay. Now, what I try and explain to people who are wearing dentures, if you're wearing a denture, it's like running a race. Say you're gonna run a marathon. Right. Well, you're gonna run them in your socks. If you're wearing a denture, a denture is just a piece of plastic that's built on a stone model to fit over your, your, your existing jaws and gums. So you're going to run that marathon, you're going to be hurting at the end of the day. That's what it's like to try and choose something solid with a denture. But they get used to it, though. I mean, there well, are some people that are happy, it seems, with their dentures. People, or maybe they're not. People accommodate. You know, we accommodate okay. to things. We're, you know, we're animals to a certain degree. All right. We can get out there and we can accommodate to a change in temperature. We can accommodate to different... Uh, levels of anything. And people do. And strikes. And they're accommodating that piece of plastic in their mouth. Are they happy? I can't say they're happy. You I say if there was a try-in period, 
for the denture wear that went to dental implants, they couldn't go back. Well, Elaborate on why that. Why would you? Why would you? If I gave you a good pair of shoes or I gave you a motorcycle or a bicycle to go 26 miles down the road, the faster and the better you can get someplace and the most comfort possible is what, is what I would want. Okay. It's what my family members would want. It's what you would want. And I don't think that's any different than what I should present to individuals who come in for an examination. So if somebody comes in, All right. I try and educate them. Right. Now, now you also say, w without jumping ahead, but as sure. little as two dental implants can secure a lower denture. Absolutely. Two dental implants okay. uh, placed in the lower front jawbone is almost becoming, or it's starting to become the standard of care. The standard of care meaning that you really should never go into a denture. You should always have implant-supported teeth.